This week on Mayhem, we talk about John Cena's four-star year, the Impact Wrestling Impossibilities, building our Dream Team promotion, and the influence of Japanese pro wrestling. And Chris LaRusso's here. All that and more Mayhem Show. Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron live here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, where you're talking some professional wrestling. And man, we got a pretty good one. I don't know, there's a good vibe. You gotta join us live to know exactly what's going down here. It's not that part's not even on gold what just went down here in the studio. Uh that's that's why you should tune in here live every Tuesday night, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Something will happen at 9 p.m. It may not be the show entirely, but something will happen on that live stream. Uh, let's go. Uh, we got a, a great collection of people to talk pro wrestling, and we got some curious topics to discuss. Maybe a little bit more math. Yes, wrestling math, because you know that doesn't give your head work. What's worth wrestling math, or 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 a storyline and movie or Doctor Who that involves time travel? We'll find out later in this show. But with us, Sorry, Sue, maybe this one involves both. Oh, it could be, and, and he's the most timey wimey of our uh, of our uh, uh, co-host today. Fresh off of the New York Comic Con on gold, he tells us about the the uh, cosplays, the wrestling cosplays on there. He is Mad Mike in Poughkeepsie, New York, the only one amongst us that has a a uh, future endeavor letter from the WWE. Yes, indeed, and um, it it is framed. Uh, I eventually will get someone to sign it. I'm not sure who. Maybe, oh, let's say Vince Russo. I don't know. Just real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt, but at any point during your employment, did Vince come down and yell, "You're fired"? Um, if he did, you would have been able to hear my orgasmic squeal. <laughs> resonating throughout time and space. And that's why that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, you just heard from him right there. He is Chris LaRusso of, geez, how many promotions? You're with Vicious Outcast Wrestling, Remix mm-hmm. Pro. You might have seen him on a Ring of Honor here or there. Hey, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. So, you got play, you, wait, why, are you, why are you on? You got a thing coming up. I want to get to the top oh, of the show. Okay, hey, we'll, we'll talk about get, it a little more later. But uh, let's, let's get it right now then. Hold on. I want to, because I made sure to bug Zorg to, uh, to be able to plug this. We are plugging... Remix Pro Wrestling's Throwdown for the Pound 12. And it is this Saturday. There you go. Check it. Wow. That was very slick, Sorg. I appreciate that. Um, We've got the main event where the Headless Horseman will be taking on the team of... Now, is he former or current TNA World Champion? Former, apparently. Former TNA World Champion Matt Hardy teaming with Facade. I'll be taking on Omega Aaron Draven. Uh, We've got... um, I'm trying to think. I, of course, you get me uh, on the spot. Kimber Lee's on the show. Eric Young, Marion Fontaine, Chance Prophet, uh, Heidi Lovelace, uh, you know, uh, Jason Gorey, Matt Connard, a ton of talent down in Marietta, Ohio. Uh, you got to check it out this Saturday. There you go. RemixProWrestling.com if you want to find out some more information on that. We'll talk about it a little bit here during the show and uh, a little bit on IndieWrestling.us. Or, I'm sorry, Indie Mayhem Show. Oh, I'm mixing stuff. It's just getting started. I haven't and even introduced everybody. Uh, also with us representing the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Uh, hot off a show this weekend that was uh, really hot. It's uh, Wheels. How are you doing, Wheels? Oh, man, Sorg. I am doing wonderful. You know what? You know what I really enjoy? I enjoy cavemen. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, go out over to YouTube. <laughs> I thought you had a stroke for a second. What was that? What was that? Thinking. I was thinking. Don't mind me. Wales got hit over a, a, over the head with a club by a caveman this weekend. That's right. That's right. We were yeah. No, no. I was safe. Sorg and I have a new perch, and we like it a lot. 
<laughs> that sounds weird. We'll find that that'll be on Indie Mayhem show as well if you want to find out what all that was about. Also with us our friend in the mainstream and my favorite person right now for a reason I can't tell you about is uh Matt yeah. Carlin's at Mainstream Matt, a recent contributor to the indie wrestling.us as well as columns on wrestling mayhem show.com. That's right, Sorg. Look, I'm, I'm researching the column for this week right now. Thanks, Buddy Landau, for ruining my evening. Anyway, <laughs> uh, there you go. Let's get down to business. Let's get down. Like I said, this is a Wrestling Man Show. You can join us. You can check out everything else. Please subscribe to the show. Check out other shows that we're doing around here, including the Midweek War, the Indie Mayhem Show, the Raw Wrap Up, where we're starting to use Blab.im. That's been a really interesting experiment. And other things like talking about Total Divas, Mike, and which actually just turns into our Carlin's relationship advice uh, uh, column of sorts uh, but uh, there's that as well all kinds of stuff over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and you can drop us a line uh, phone or email 412-206-WMS0 or that email address good times good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and uh, of course please uh, check us out on patreon patreon.com slash wrestlingmayhemshow uh, if you are we, we actually have a new level on there uh, we have a lot of people who have been joining us for a long time, but if you want to drop five bucks per episode, that's just episodes of this show, not the millions of them I just uh, uh, talked about earlier. Uh, we have a new executive producer level. We have some people taking advantage of that over on the Awesome Cast. If we get four successful uh, uh, payments uh, and your credit card clears and all that crap, we will send you a business card that says Wrestling Mayhem Show Executive Producer. That's right. With your name on it, you can use it on LinkedIn because you're an EP. That's what they do. They give the money to support the thing, and that's what you're doing, and we really appreciate that. But we we appreciate everybody that gives a little bit to the show, uh, especially the longtime runners on there, including Bo Diggity. Woo! Wow, there's a delay on that one. Uh, as well as... Uh, um, WrestlingRevolution.com, the WrestlingRevolution.com. Our friend Antonio Garza, uh, frequent contributor as well as Bo Diggly Antonio's before. Antonio's not my friend anymore. Sorry. What's that? Antonio's not my friend anymore. Well, oh, oh, they, yeah, they're having a feud over uh, 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 what's her face uh, on NXT. Uh, also, Ed Ed Burke, Edward Burke. Uh, it was Ed, Ed Burke twenty three, right? I got the number right. Yes. Oh, help. Thank you. Uh, on the Twitters. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, as it goes, and you Patreon more, I will remember your name and your Twitter. Garza knows about that. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you so much uh, for that. If, if you don't have money to contribute to the show, uh, just tell a friend. Uh, spread it around. Retweet the, the tweets. Uh, share the Facebook posts. And, and just let other people know about the mayhem and help this uh, uh, grow. And join us on the group, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. There's a lot of great, great conversation going on there at Mayhem Show on Twitter as well. So let's get into it. Let's talk some pro wrestling. And let's talk about this little bit of a... Um, there's a little bit of a, 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 a trivia. I don't know. I, okay, listen, buddy. You you you've you've been getting everybody riled up today because of your statements. So much so that we just dedicated the first sex segment of this show to it, and uh, and 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 you're you're infecting the chat room with this as well. So. He's got a suggested big question, but it, I think it's a point of con controversy because everybody keeps talking about it, and, and it kind of exploded before the show, so I thought we'd get into it here. Um, what does the panel think of Cena, John Cena, in case you're confused, uh, having the most four-star matches in a year in the history of North American pro wrestling? Mm. Of so course... Like Speaking a little bit to the uh, open challenge and, and how many people he's had great matches on Raw with the pay-per-views uh, over over this past year with with just about everybody, right? Uh, from Rusev on, I mean, I, uh, Brock Lesnar at the beginning of the year, um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, Mad Mike, the, um, go ahead. I was just going to say, we're talking about um, the three-way at the Rumble, uh, all three matches with Kevin Owens. We're talking about the Rollins match at SummerSlam. The Rollins oh, match at Night Champions. Match is not a champion truck, but the Rollins match at the MSG special. How many are we up to? Is that seven? That's seven. Okay, that's oh, like, your seven matches right there. Hold on, like I actually have it. I had it pulled up real quick. So it's the the, the three way. Um, it's uh, the three with Owens. Oh yeah, you actually yeah you had it right. Three with Owens, three with Rollins, and the uh, triple threat at the Royal Rumble. Okay, because okay. I was really because because when you said that I was like what. 
and I had to look it up myself. So, so there's some common denominators there, aren't there? Owens and Rollins, for one thing. Uh, the common denier is essentially Ring of Honor. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, so, so Chris, when you have your uh, five star class with Cena here very soon, we're going to... <laughs> that blew my mind. I actually, like my brain froze for a second. I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> well, you uh. know. You know, so, so I, I, I appreciate your 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 faith, but Jesus Christ, man! So hey, the mayhem bump. I mean, I mean, the, the this is your like third time coming on one of our shows. Last I it, guy I remember having three or four showings on here. He's now Corey Graves. There you go. Wow. There, there you okay. go. We, the mayhem bump just, is real. I'm just waiting for once I leave the studio. It's just all my dreams. Between that, the drift, the true. drifters popping up all over the place. Uh, oh yeah, he's, he's, doing, you know, he's doing very well. Kind of employed. What's that? Eric Young is still kind of employed. There you go. We're helping him keep on by a thread. That's why he didn't. He should have came back, or he'd be doing a lot better. So, exactly. He doesn't remember who DNA we are. Might have, DNA might have a TV deal. We're not counting Jimmy Snuka. Okay, <laughs> just want to make that clear. We're not no. counting Jimmy Snuka on that mayhem bump line. No. Okay. No. No. Nope. No. We're just letting that go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but back to John Cena. Uh, mm-hmm. Matt, you got. You got. Were you doing math over there? Oh, he's got something going on. We'll leave Matt alone. Um, but uh, Matt, or, uh, actually, uh, Chris, you were you were you were talking a little bit. Uh, had some interesting thoughts about uh, uh, Cena uh, uh, and these matches uh, before the show. Sure. Um, you know, one of the things they they say a lot is that uh, as far as having a good match is that it, it takes two to tango, and mm-hmm. that it's not necessarily that someone can be carried. But to really get that kind of very special excellence, um, that that's a chemistry between uh, two performers. And I think that it would be doing uh, John Cena a great, great disservice to suggest that the only reason uh, that these matches were as good as they were were because of Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar, and, and Kevin Owens. Uh, that's not to say that those guys aren't fantastic. They are. But I think the... Uh, especially the first Owens match, which I thought was the best. I thought the w- was it at um, Money in the Bank or which one, which one was the first one? Payback. I'm not, I can't remember the payback. payback. No, I, I want to say it was Money in the Bank. Okay. Okay. Um, but the first one was no, it was Elimination Chamber. The first oh, right, one was right. definitely You're Elimination right. Chamber. You're right. Um, I thought that that was one of the best. Uh, examples of two guys bringing the best out of each other because I thought Cena was the perfect opponent for Kevin Owens and that you you really got to that was the Kevin Owens introduction to the uh, to the wrestling world at large I mean the people who knew him from from Ring of Honor and from the the independent circuit and even from NXT that was his his big coming out party and it could not have gone better I thought it was an absolutely fantastic match, and it was not Kevin Owens, you know, dragging Cena through it. Those they had amazing chemistry. I mean, the chemistry was so good that they did it for the next three pay per views, next two pay per views. So uh, I just don't. I think to to suggest that um, uh, this. I mean, it's it's an amazing accomplishment for Cena, and Cena's having an amazing year. I mean, the, just. The amazing matches on pay per view, the amazing matches with the the, the U.S. Open Challenge, um, it, it, you you cannot de- if if you are trying to deny his his talent and his ability at this point, I, just the there's too much evidence to suggest that you know not only great but but an all time great, in my opinion. Right, right, Matt. Matt, you've been you've been desperately researching this. What are your thoughts on this so far? I'm um I'm surprised, but when I went and looked at the matches, I wasn't surprised. Um, I don't know what to say, Sork. I don't know why Cena has kind of sometimes has diminishing returns for me when he's having these great matches. Um, even when he's having these uh the the series of matches he had with Owens by that third match, I was kind of like, okay, like I felt like I had seen it, like there and um. Brandon Shroud, I will get the Brandon Stroud mention in here because Eamon isn't here to do it. Um, <laughs> Brandon Stroud wrote about Raw and um, talked about how there has become this thing, at least 
from his perspective of the Cena match. And it gets a little bit exhausting. But when you're watching the the one on one Cena match, and you know, I'm also kind of talking about the matches we've seen in the U.S. Open Challenge and the stuff he's done with, uh, you know, obviously Sami Zayn, and we've seen some great matches with Cesaro and all that, and Neville. And it became a running joke about the everyone who gets called up from NXT can kick out of the attitude adjustment. So there is a routine to the Cena matches, but you know what? At the same time, you know what? There was a routine to Bret Hart matches, and there was a routine to Ric Flair matches. So Hulk Hogan, holy I, crap. I to, I'm not going to rain on his parade here. I'm not going to deny that Cena's amazing. Um, I'm just saying that for me, it's, it gets a little – it kind of wears you out after a little bit. And I was saying another thing too as I was researching some stuff earlier. Um, as far as like total matches ever in WWE history, Cena's now number two all time. So there's a reason we're kind of – some of us as fans are kind of growing a little exhausted. It's because we've seen – Nothing but this guy for more than a decade. Wait, wait, who's number two? As, as, as good as he's been in the ring, and he has been very good, he's had a lot of great matches. He is in the most creative rut of almost any character in the history of professional wrestling. Okay. I think that's why he grates on everyone. I, w- I want to throw back for a second. Matt, who's the number one? Probably Taker, right? Uh, yeah, Undertaker is number one. You're okay. right. That's a very good answer, Mike, and that is number one, the Undertaker. Okay. I think one thing, and if, if I could jump in real quick, um, yeah. with Cena, and, and, and I was having a, a conversation with uh, someone earlier this weekend about Cena being sort of, a, his character is locked down. Right. You don't really see any kind of fluctuation in how John Cena is presented, how but John Cena there acts. There doesn't John, need to be? Ex- there doesn't yes, need to be. Yes, there does. Well, for you. There, for, there's the I, artistically... I absolutely no, Mike. I absolutely agree with you. Artistically, okay. there comes a point where you're like, okay, and, and I mean, you'd have to be blind to see it. We've seen this act, but the WWE gets this real great excuse of if they ever try to do something different, money noticeably drops, and they have shown time and time and time again that when Cena's not on pay per view. Not on t- when he's not on pay per view, buy rates aren't as good. When he's not on Raw, ratings aren't as high. When he mm-hmm. isn't at house shows, house show uh, numbers go down. There is a dollars and cents direct correlation for Cena, where there, I think everyone would agree. I don't, I don't think there's anyone that would agree that seeing some kind of character evolution would be great and would be a, a breath of fresh air. But he is so connected to the lifeblood of the WWE at this point that they would be uh, that, that it would be very, very financially risky right. to try and do something drastic. I mean, uh, what would a heel turn do to now artistically or for, for the fans that may be awesome. That could be the, you know, it, it would definitely get me watching a lot more closely, but what would that do to, to the bottom line at the end of the month for the WWE and would probably do a lot of damage. Uh, yeah. Cause Hulk Hogan, when he turned heel, he never sold any merch after that. I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying never that sold did, a single piece of merchandise. I, I mean, there, there's definitely examples of, of it working, but it's, I'm not saying it wouldn't work. I'm saying it would be a risk that they're probably not willing. Yeah. To take. Yeah. yeah that's, but, there's a difference though. Cena's sales haven't dropped. Ratings yeah, are but dropping. I'm, I'm but, not even but, saying Cena has to turn heel. Yeah, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying some nuance to the character might freshen it up a little bit. He can lose matches. Mm-hmm. Like they, you don't have to have Cena win every single feud. You don't like DC Comics reboot Superman every 15 years or so, and they change him up a little bit because they know he's the most overpowered guy they have. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Matt, Matt, you or, got a comment? Like if, if Doomsday crushes. Oh. Superman's spine, people aren't going to say, well, I guess that Superman's not hot shit anymore. He got beat. Mm-hmm. Matt, In fact, he dude. didn't just die. He was rebooted. You know, all that shit. Matt. Cena can lose matches. Matt, should- Matt Carlins. Matt Carlins has the floor. Sorg, Sorg, I think we could sum this up in LOL Superman wins. Anyway. <laughs> uh, here's the point. Here's the point I want to make, and I will be echoing something that Eamon just said in the chat room. Mm-hmm. For all these great matches Cena has had this year, who has benefited from this sword? I mean, Owens, maybe a little bit. Yes, he got that really huge bump coming in, 
but he's kind of drifted back into either continental title. I guess there's nowhere to go but down after you have a feud with John Cena, right? That's because. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I would not say that Seth Rollins has benefited from this ongoing series of matches with Cena. I would say, well, I mean, Brock doesn't need Cena to be who Brock is. But even other guys, this U.S. Open Challenge, who has gotten anything out of the U.S. Open Challenge? Has, has it helped Ziggler? Did it help Ambrose? Did it help Neville? Did it help Zayn? Did it help Cesaro? No, it didn't help any of these guys. So Cena gets to have great matches at 9 o'clock every Monday night, but who does it help? And the third hour goes in the crapper. That's the ru- that's the routine. That's where we are in 2015. And right? I, and I every think you, Cena feud has literally Cena. been every Cena feud has literally been one step forward, two steps back because the guy wins the first match against Cena and then proceeds to get shellacked for the next two and a half months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chris, no, I, I, I mean, you, it's been seen over and over again. I think that um, they will always point to they'll always point to the money. And, um, you know, uh, Mike was making some, some good points that, you know, it's not necessarily, uh, going to be a one-to-one correlation that any change in John Cena would, uh, would be bad. There's some that may spark more interest. He may make more money. I think that they're just, the WWE at this point is very risk adverse. They're afraid to take chances. They, um, and They've got something that works, and they're probably going to stick with it until it stops making money. And, you know, that we may be nearing the tipping point of that at some point in the future. But as far as right now, I think they're always going to look at the bottom line and that they'll always be beholden mm. to the bottom line. That Creative will always be beholden, especially with with a with a you know publicly traded company like the WWE. They'll uh, so- always be be told into the money so from the chat room uh garza saying uh seen as the proxy but he's still he should have power to push people like he did with nikki okay there mm. you go that's a good point there i'm just thinking that's never addressed uh but yeah the, the guys are very uh yeah booking goes in actual match though as well which is why he stands with owen and neville being the only ones who get truly elevated and i'm with that i again you don't have to win i think cesaro cesaro had a great batch of matches but then they didn't do anything with them. And I think there's a lot of stuff going on that, yeah, Cena gives you the rub, but that only goes so far. You know, because, mm-hmm. again, who knows the political structure back there? Of course, I'm sure you know how that works in the locker rooms you've been in. Just imagine. I would imagine just anything like that, like, to the nth scale, right? I mean, I can't, I cannot even fathom what goes into it because at least with any of the independent companies I've worked with, Generally, it's a you know who you're who who's pulling who's in charge. You know who's in charge, and you know who's listening to who. Whether it be um, you know the owner, the booker, uh, respected veterans in the locker room, you you sort of know who has power. Whereas in the WWE, it's not only um, sort of the the inner locker room politics, but then the corporate side of things, where there could be people who are in the the suit and ties who have their own agenda that may have no knowledge of professional wrestling or very limited. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, how often have we heard that there have been writers for the company that weren't wrestling fans or, or knew very little about pro wrestling when they, when they got that job. So I can only imagine what the, uh, what it would be like at the WWE. All right. Well, the fire of this conversation is going to continue to burn on, in the chat room, so uh, and I'm sure on our Facebook page as well. Uh, so please, uh, I'll let you guys know. You know, let, let us know what you think of the John Cena situation. Uh, the Buddy Landau's burning question that is firing a lot of stuff tonight. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a quick uh, look at our friends and be right back. Talk about uh, Mike's uh, new wrestling math and uh, his his recent marathon of everything that happened last Wednesday in uh, pro wrestling in his uh, post Comic Con binge. And uh, everything going on there. Uh, but I want to touch base on, uh, speaking of wrestling, we talked about Remix Pro Wrestling. Uh, support indie wrestling. You see this guy, Chris LaRusso, from Vicious Outcast Wrestling over there uh, at IndieWrestling.us. You can pick up uh, any of those shows that they've released over there digitally, and uh, including the Rosa Reith. Uh, now, now, you're not in the Deathmatch tournament. No, right hell no. no. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, no. But no, absolutely that, not. I mean, uh, props. To, no, absolutely props to all those guys. I have a ton of respect for everybody who goes through that. But no, you will not see Chris LaRusso on the Lords of the Anarchy uh, 
digital download. Okay, being a peasant in that case, right? Yes. Uh, but you can check out that. You can have it. You can already get uh, this past weekend's RWA Bloody Harvest 2015, including a, a great three-way match for the Cruiserweight title um, between uh, uh, Jason Gorey, Sanjay Dutt, and Amazing Red. Just a, a tremendous, tremendous match and a great night of wrestling um, all night. Uh, they're doing a lot of great stuff there. Wheels, you know, uh, as you know, um, uh, uh, shout out to Chris Taylor. Uh, we gotta get him on the show. He's he's long overdue as oh, well. He, he'd be a treat. He's a, he's a treat in person. So it's, <laughs> I'd imagine having him on the show would be pretty good. Chris, you um, know, you know, I love you. <laughs> Uh, go over the, the board and find out what he did with that new RWA heavyweight title um, uh, oh, as God. well. Uh, so, mm. yes. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, a lot of great stuff around the indies. What have you missed over the weekend? It's not just about the stuff here in Western PA or the stuff from Cleveland or you know the people there involved with us. Uh, it is about indie wrestling as a whole. Uh, I, you know, I believe knowing about any of those things elevates everybody. And uh, knowing what Chikara is doing. Even I even said earlier, uh, Chikara is, is actually live streaming uh, the first night of King of King of Trios. I'm going to lose everybody in the chat room right now. And I said, it's okay if you guys don't watch us tonight live. That's fine. We'll be here in the morning. Uh, so, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Go check that out. Uh, Indie Mayhem shows posted over there as well. Our great interviews, uh, including the one coming up uh, tonight, scheduled with Remy LaVey of IWC and some other promotions around uh, the area. Uh, so, and, and this guy, Chris Russo, we, we, we talked with him on that show too. Uh, so, a little, find out a little more about what's going on with him and support indie wrestling. Best of Dalton Castle is up there. Volumes 1 and 2 are available. See him before he popped up in Ring of Honor and had the boys uh, as a part of him, although I guess they're not with him anymore. I no, they're them. being turned into men. Oh, they're going to turn into men. Fantastic. Go check it out. IndieWrestling.us. All right, so uh, we... we we had, we had some interesting responses last week when we talked about um, my mistake of calling TNA an indie fed if they lost TV was was one one thing that came up in comments. So uh, that, that was that was an interesting. Sounds thing accurate to me, Sorg. Okay, okay, there you go. Exactly. Hell, I call them one now. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're essentially just airing old DVDs. <laughs> there you go. A destination America, baby. Um, so, Mike, you. One, you just went through, we just watched Respect, uh, uh, Takeover Respect for NXT yes. like yesterday. Uh, we had about 40 minutes on the wrap-up. I'm not going to you know, get too big into my opinions on that. We had a great talk on there uh, uh, about uh, NXT, uh, but you know, generally, you know, kind of as a state of things. Now, you had something you wanted to bring us tonight. Uh, yeah, first, uh, quick thoughts on Respect. It was just fucking awesome. Uh, I don't think it was as good as Brooklyn. Uh, that's probably because I was there and I'm a little bit biased. Uh, but Oscar was awesome. Bailey and Sasha were fantastic and as always. Um, the tag team tournament I thought was great. I thought the ending with the roses at the end of the Iron Man match was a little bit much. Uh, I think that would have been good for something that happened after the cameras went off for the crowd, but, mm -hmm. um, it was a little odd. Uh, but the, the, the Dusty Rhodes classic was good. And, uh, I did like seeing Cody come out as Cody, but, um, Ring of Honor aired the show that I could have gone to instead of take over Brooklyn. And I didn't miss much. And then, uh, we got to TNA and their world title series, Sorg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now Sorg, did, did you watch TNA? No, no, I, I was very, very, I was too busy filming wrestling. I don't blame you. Um, okay, so here, here's, here's what their world title tournament is. There are eight groups, okay? Four wrestlers in each group, which is uh, 32 wrestlers. And I didn't even know TNA had that many, first of all. Oof. But there's four knockouts, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, there's going to be uh, the, each wrestler in a group has a match against each other. So that's a total of six matches per group. There's eight groups. So in the round one of this tournament, Sorg, there are 48 matches. Wait, how yes. long are we going to... I, okay, I thought the Dusty thing yep. was long, was big. Oh, yeah. The Dusty thing was long. The Dusty thing was long, but that was just single elimination. That was a single elimination tournament. So we're going to go this through is, this all the way to like a knockout round? Not knockout oh. as in as in TNA <laughs> knockout, but I mean... Oh, like, like the World Cup. There is a group 
group of knockouts that will essentially be having a knockout knockout round. But um, Ching. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it's like, but it's like the world. It's it's what you're describing is the World Cup, right? Kind of like the World Cup for soccer. Yeah. Okay. But like, way less interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, because there is, it's a point system. Point system, isn't it, Mike? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. And once you fact, like, I didn't even factor in points. I'm like, I'm not doing. I'm not caring that much about this. Uh, <laughs> So Neither after, they. yeah, exactly. Once you get past round one, they take the top two point getters from each group, which to me doesn't make sense, which means you'll have two knockouts wrestling guys, which the only one should be awesome Kong. The rest of them, whatever. Um, so in round two, you have 15 matches. Hmm. Sorg, that's a total of sixty-three wait, wait, matches. Wait, wait, in this wait, 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 wait! Like, you just broke me a little bit because I just saw Kenny Uh-oh. King as a, yeah, Kenny, Kenny King, King. Kenny King's a ring uh-huh. of honor. Oh no, no, oh no! We're getting to that. Oh, okay, I'm we're sorry. I'm getting sorry. Getting to that. We sorry. are getting to that. <laughs> oh, because my picks to win the tournament because this has all been filmed in May, June, and July. Uh, it's either going to be NXT's James Storm. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be uh, Ring of Honor's Austin Aries or Kenny King. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be uh, Global Force Wrestling's probably half the roster. Or uh, the Department of Correctional Facilities is Bram. Oh. 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 Wow. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. That's. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, um, and what's worse about this is that they planned this. This mm-hmm. is their plan. Because they film. Wait, 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 wait. This feels like when, when they say in Battlestar Galactica they had a plan. No. <laughs> Which of these? Wait, is Ethan Carter been a Cylon the entire time? God, I wish so. Like, I, I Ratings wish would so. go through the roof if that twist was thrown in there. Yeah, they might get over 500,000 people watching it. Anyway, <laughs> they, they filmed roundtables for each group where the competitors just talk to each other during the matches. What? Yes. They show a split screen during the match where the match is on the smaller window, and you see the round table of people talking on the larger one to make it seem like, oh, yeah, wait, we're filming this live. We're filming this live. Meanwhile, uh, Gail Kim did not come out with the Knockouts Championship, so right there. Um, Austin Aries, remember Austin Aries, guys? Do you remember what the last thing he did in TNA was before this past Wednesday? No. He wrestled a career versus name match. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I thought they were going to have some kind of explanation, like maybe because he's a former world champion. They're just like, oh, no, Austin Aries gets back in these things. They didn't explain it. Um, for some reason, he had Sarita with him. Mm-hmm. Not explained. Uh, I'm wondering. I would love, and I don't think TNA would do this, but I would love to see them show some of the band Hernandez matches from when he was <laughs> <laughs> when he couldn't be on TV. Maybe we get some MVP in there, some New Japan's MVP Hernandez World I, Tour. Yeah, the, Hern- the Hernandez band from Destination America. Hernandez World After World. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> they should just release a whole DVD, Hernandez After Dark. By the way, hashtag <laughs> Rise Above TNA Hate in the uh, chat room from Garza. Okay, Eamon, it, uh, Eamon's correcting me. It's Rosita. Who the fuck cares? They they didn't even call her either of those names. They called her Thea. It's his woman. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't care if it's this woman. Matt Hardy doesn't come to a room. I love that he's sky. just having an argument with the chat room straight up right now. <laughs> I didn't get to do the midweek war, so again, it's a damn good thing because this would have just pissed me. I would have canceled the show. I would have canceled the fucking show. I would have canceled the fucking show. Because honestly, the midweek war until Lucha Underground comes back is over. NXT has won. NXT has won the midweek war. The other shows are showing over a month old garbage. That's right. NXT has won the midweek wars and have placed those celebratory. Uh, flowers from the end of the show on everybody else's grave, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, pretty much. So wait, and all the, all those ta- all those flags say pre-tape on them. <laughs> wow! Wow! 
Yep. Huh. Uh, see, wait, 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 no, no, wait. Okay, so, this week, so, so TNA, but I know you did watch Ring of Honor. I did. How are they doing? Nothing happened. Okay. Nothing happened. The matches were fine. But good I was going to say, you, you didn't like Okada and uh, Roddy Strong? I really enjoyed that one. Uh, Roddy, uh, I, I have issues with Roddy Strong because I have no reason to care about what Roddy Strong. What is your problem with Roddy Strong? <laughs> I have no reason to care about him. They have given me nothing. In, you know me. I like character. I like story. If I can't connect to a character, I'm not going to be invested in the match, no matter how good it is. Okay. It's fair. It's fair. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's my opinion. I'm not Dave Meltzer. I'm not giving the Young Bucks five stars every match. It's just my opinion. It's not up for if the there's not a party. story. If yeah, there's I, not a story going on, I'm not going to give a shit. I they had Prince Nana out there during a Cedric Alexander match, and not once did they mention the note he gave to Caprice Coleman. That's an easy thing to do. I don't care how pre-taped it is. You can just mm-hmm. insert it. <laughs> like uh, Sorg, Meltzer has not given the Young Bucks five stars for a match they had this year. I just oh, no. Oh, no. Yet. John Cena but greater than Young Bucks. Them, but they do have at least – Seven, four plus star matches this year, according to Meltzer. <laughs> Wait, four? <laughs> How do you have four plus star matches and not a five star match? I'm saying that they have matches that are four stars or higher, but they do not have a five star match. This is all according to Meltzer. This is so what you it's quarter opinion. stars. What is this? Yes, yeah, so you Virgil can't. Cast? You can't have four and a half four, stars. Four you can't get uh, four. And four, four and, yeah, yeah. It, it's. <laughs> Four and three quarter stars, which at that point is just rubbing salt in the wound. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that that might as well be Dave Meltzer just saying "fuck you." Did I say "fuck." <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's like kicking out a two and nine tenths. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's a two and fifteen sixteenths count, King. Oh. All right, is it, uh, I don't know where we're at with this. Frank, I, I enjoy Ring of Honor for what it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, it's I, I have to. So you, you understand? I have to be. A, you understand? I have it's, to be a little bit biased. Yeah, a little uh, bit. You know, <clears throat> um, but I, I think that uh, you know. Look, I, I think that he brings up a good point that the, you know, w- when you're going with things that were taped over. I mean, because the, the last two weeks have been both of the last two weeks have been Field of Honor. Is that correct? Uh, this past week was Field of Honor. The week, the couple weeks before that were the uh, Pennsylvania shows with the New Japan wrestlers. Okay, so I mean, yeah, we're 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 going on you know well over a month at this point. Yeah, they, sometimes they pay. Well, like this month and week a half. coming up, this mm. week coming up is the stuff from Texas, which is post All Star Extravaganza. And I've I've said many times when they have their storyline shows, they're very good. Mm-hmm. They're very good when they actually follow the narrative. They're very good. I I enjoy them quite a bit. I think it's also. I'm, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, no. I was just get like I'm actually looking forward to this week, but mm-hmm. you, you can't keep me as a fan if you get me excited for a pay per view like All Star Extravaganza, which I watched and I enjoyed, and then the next week you do not do any progression at all. It's like if I saw WrestleMania where. Lesnar beat the streak, and then we didn't hear about anything about it until a week before payback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. makes sense. Yep, makes it's a big sense. problem. Absolutely they, valid. It doesn't matter how great these pay per views are for Ring of Honor; it takes weeks for them to get back onto storyline mode. They can't carry the momentum through Sword. It takes too long. Wait, wait, why are you telling? And me? I don't know what the answer is. I mean, obviously there are some heavy restrictions that they're under as far as the TV production side goes. Look, they have to produce their weekly television. Uh, to air during the same weekends that they're running their pay-per-views. And then that runs, you know, four or five days later on Destination America. So it's a problem. But all you have to, I mean, and maybe this is just me and maybe it's because I haven't worked in a wrestling company that like on the creative side. Mm -hmm. But if you know something that's going to happen on a pay-per-view and you're recording commentary for it, regardless of when you're recording the commentary, just throw something in. Throw something in about it. It's a throwaway line or two. It doesn't have to be much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I, like I mean, NXT did it where they would show stuff that was taped before the pay per view. To be fair, afterwards. To be fair, sometimes those insertions they did were really bad on NXT. And I, oh. I uh, yeah, I agree with that. But still, they were there, Sorg. Mm-hmm. 
they kept the narrative going, even if it was kind of a shitty transition. Which is also weird because I've noticed them do drop-ins on Ring of Honor as well. Usually, like anytime they say they start talking about the hotline or something, or or like this thing just came up on the hotline, they I'm pretty sure they're drop-ins. Uh, that's not on Destination America though. Oh, it, it isn't. Nope, none of that stuff's on Destination America. Oh, which, yeah, that's the thing. I haven't because, watched. I haven't watched the Destination uh, Destination America version of any of them because I think they just put whatever goes out on the cable on their on, yes. on their site, right? Yes, it, it's yeah. Um, well, the so, way they do, from what I've heard, the way they do the Sinclair uh, broadcast, yeah. because they don't have to pay for ad time. Yeah, that's when they put in all the little inserts and stuff like that. Oh. And instead of maybe giving me two minutes of cleaning up streamers for the young bucks. Why not cut that part out and maybe give us some of those? Because okay, I think those are really good. Now all about piling on those damn young bucks. <laughs> all right. No, I, I like I the young bucks. Your brakes here, Mike. I like the young. One bucks. of those I'm bucks just, just had a brand new baby buck, and you need he, to step back for a minute. All right. Did he super kick the buck in the face? Not yet, but I, did you guys see them? <laughs> super I, kick I Elmo? don't. Did yeah, I was about to say don't. Elmo? You're gonna you're, you that wait awesome. two weeks and that kid is gonna be throwing super kicks. Exactly. <laughs> All right. On that point, that, uh, this, this is fun. Awesome. I, I, I we got a great group here tonight uh, talking about some wrestling, and uh, we're gonna get into the big question, whatever that may be. We'll find out here shortly. And in the meantime, please check out our friends. If you're here in the Pittsburgh area, we're talking about a lot of Pittsburgh wrestling. We're talking about a lot of stuff. You can check out Chris Russo in in the area and Remix Pro Wrestling. Give them another plug since he's here for it. All right, we're going to get it. Remix Pro Wrestling, Throwdown for the Pound 12, this Saturday, Marietta, Ohio, RemixProWrestling.com. You can see Matt Hardy uh, team with Facade to take on the Headless Horseman, Jason Gorey and Matt Connard. Chris LaRusso will be taking on Omega Aaron Draven. We've got Marion Fontaine, Eric Young, Heidi Lovelace, and much, much, much more. It's all in support of the uh, local Humane Society. It is Throwdown for the Pound 12. Uh, come and, on. and if they're not local, they're usually on DVD afterwards. Yes, DVD, right? so. and oh, I think they also went to Blu-ray. Ooh, so uh, they had it. their first uh, Blu-ray release, which was I think Throw uh, Throw Down Eleven. Okay, it, yeah, there but um, yeah, their uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, RemixProWrestling dot com. Uh, tickets are still available, even though first, second, and third rows are sold out. There you go. Go check it out if you're in the area, or check it, like, get on there, whatever social media mailing list, whatever they might have, and uh, pick up the DVD or Blu-ray afterwards. Uh, in the meantime, if you're locally, 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 Slice on Broadway has been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for well over a year. Chris, you got a little bit here before the show. Absolutely little, delicious. Go. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna have a cheap meal, it will be Slice on Broadway from now on out. Absolutely fantastic pizza. There you go. There you go. Slice on Broadway.com to check them out. They're in the South Hills here, right along the tracks in Beachview, as well as on Main Street in Carnegie, PA. And uh, there's you can follow them on social media, PGH underscore Slice or Facebook and uh, Instagram. You'll get hungry too. You'll wish you were in Pittsburgh if you're not, like Mad Mike is up there in Poughkeepsie. And, uh, and, and check them out and tell, let them know, regardless, that you've heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem show. And uh, we'll be right back after a look at this past week in Sorgatron Media. That's your dog? Yeah. Is it a tiny, a tiny dog? Yeah, it's a, it's a long hair chihuahua. Bring it to me. No. Why? I want to put something in my mouth. No. Why does uh, my PS4 keep downloading Barbie Horse Adventure? What you're telling me is that PS4 has turned into TiVo. Yeah. yeah. Which means at some point... You're going to watch Super Redneck Trucker. It's <laughs> yes. going to be like, oh, we downloaded every episode of Queer as Folk for you. What is on Katie's face? The Galaxy Gear VR, mm-hmm. which is made by Samsung in partnership with Oculus. There's going to be a consumer version that comes out. Um, I think this is to get developers thinking on how they can build their apps and how things work. Tell us, what is the concept? What is Looking for Group? It's a mixed co-working and gaming space. Pay by the hour to play on Xbox Ones, PlayStation 4s we use, or PCs. Aska? Is that how we're saying it? WWE's doing one thing right because Japanese pronunciation, you never pronounce the U. Okay, but it's Aska. That's on. Asuka. Yeah, I'm I can't wait until she needs Dana Brooke in the eye and gives her a little bit of a lecture with her. <laughs> um. <laughs> We're 
are back, guys. Please check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. All kinds of geekery happening there. And no, no small pets were injured in the making of that first clip. So let's get into the big question. And uh, the Papa Lunchbox is off on uh, uh, Papa Lunchbox uh, uh, excursions this week. So uh, we uh, default to Mad Mike had a very interesting question he went to share with us. And I think it's going to be a very thought-provoking one. Yeah, um... So as you can tell from the first couple segments, there's some frustration happening. <laughs> um, so I was thinking, if we had to rebrand our own wrestling company, and let's say we start with four people, okay? Uh, the, the big question this week, if you had to rebrand uh, your own company, one person from WWE, one person from TNA, one person from NXT, and one person from Ring of Honor, who would you choose? Do you want me to go first, Sork? Sure. All right. I'll give you guys a little bit more time to think. Um, mine, uh, from WWE, I would take Cesaro. Because the man is a genetic freak. He can do anything. And uh, he works good as heel or babyface and can get a good crowd reaction. Uh, from TNA, naturally, I'm going to take Ethan Carter for a lot of the same reasons. Uh He's also a great uh, guy who can work the mic. Uh, from Ring of Honor, I will take Cedric Alexander. Mm-hmm. I, I really, really dig Cedric's work. Um, he's really good in ring. He's developing a nice little heel character, and I really, really am engaged in his stuff. And uh, from NXT, it's a tough call, but I think I will take Emma. Because oh, I think Emma intriguing. Emma has been vastly underutilized. Uh, her heel character is now crushing it, in my opinion. Uh, the bubbly, the bubble character that when she started was very one note, and Santino kind of killed it along with the little iPad fiasco. But her heel character, I think, is on point, and she's having a lot of fun with it now. And I think she's really kind of settled into her role. Okay, I like that. I, I think I have one lined up here. Okay, uh, one I got it. I think EC3 is makes sense. It, it, I think is the most interesting thing that's been on that show in the past two years. Um, mm. It was entertaining when he was on NXT, even more so now. Just just over the moon on him, right? So he's the easy one. I would go with Seth Rollins. He is the future. He is. Uh, I think he's going to be the your, your monster heel. I'm going to go with Jay Lethal. Because again, he is just leaps and bounds, especially over the last few years. Can I can I get an add on? Can we get Truth Martini just because I want him to tell me more oh. stories about pissing off people in Canada? Fantastic. Since I'm assuming Beta <laughs> Scott, since I'm assuming Beta Scott would follow Cedric, yeah, we'll allow that. Okay, okay. There we go. There we go. Well, you, you got some beta in there. Uh, so no, again, he he's just doing tremendous, tremendous stuff in there, like beyond what I imagine Jay Lethal could do over all these years, right? I I mean to to have a comeback like he has had from the uh black machismo character it just blows my mind absolutely um you know it could have been just like like the guy that he's the hurricane for the rest of his career you know what i mean Mm -hmm. uh but he's not Not, nothing against uh shane helms but you know it it could have gone that way and but not from as successful of a top spot what hurricane had oh and uh the east three lethal rollins and i'm gonna go finn baylor I think there's a lot of potential there, and and hopefully my new hopefully my new promotion has a lot of production value. <laughs> they have a lot of fun with, as we're seeing WWE I, is. I Sorg, do you realize you just picked all of the champions? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Essentially, yeah. EC three EC three just lost a belt like on Sunday. I know. I, you know, I wasn't even thinking about belts, but. Hey, I guess so. But yeah, you got Lethal, Rollins, Finn, and EC3 who literally just lost. I did the just, I did just pick like the top pick of the, the card. champions and just go. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but when is the last time you've looked at the wrestling landscape and seen this number of people on top like this that freaking deserved it? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I get. It, there's no slouches in any of that. You know, there's no. Well, of course, John Cena's got the belt again. Not that he didn't earn it, but like, of course, he's got it again. You know, mm-hmm. like, like. These are four names that have arrived in the last year, mm-hmm. and it's pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, no, I completely did that by accident. I was just thinking, like, well, who's, who comes to mind? And, and, and I guess it was a little, little easier than I expected. Sorry about that. So, uh, who's got the next one? I'll go if no one else. Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. 
Um, from the WWE, I would go with with Roman Reigns, and now I know that he's got some you know concerns, and he's had some issues with how he's been booked and and presented. But I think as far as raw talent goes, marketable look goes, um, I, I, he's proven he can go in the ring, and I think that one of the great advantages he has that why I wouldn't take maybe like a Kevin Owens or um, you know Cena or someone like that is. He is probably suffered fewer injuries, and I and I think that he would be a good long term investment. That you would get, you have a lot of, you know, very fruitful years uh, ahead of him. So Roman Reigns would be from the WWE. From NXT, I agree with Zorg. I'm going with Finn Balor. I think that he has the potential to be the next Shawn Michaels. I think that he has the potential to be that across demographics appeal where the uh, you know, the guys will love him because he's an amazing wrestler, amazing performer, uh, and can just bell to bell go 100%. Uh, I think the girls will love him because, you know, he looks like a million bucks, and the kids will love him because of the face paint. And, um, you know, he's just, he's one of those people that can appeal to everyone in the crowd. Um, from TNA, I, who? <laughs> Baby Richards. Okay. I think they, I mean, and you know, okay. that's a little bit biased because I have had, you know, been kicked in the head by him, but, uh, I, just from, from first, <laughs> you, have, you have a kinship from firsthand experience, as far as just somebody who ups like in the ring can go at, on a level that I had never seen firsthand, um, amazing shape, amazing intensity, uh, and really has proven, you know, with his, uh, his, his run at ring of honor could prove he could be a, a, a top guy. And uh, I think he, he's, he's got the skills and the talent to be a top guy uh, anywhere. Ring of Honor, uh, Adam Cole. I think uh, sort Ooh, of same, yes. uh, same yeah. logic with, uh, with uh, Rollins. I mean, not with Rollins, but uh, the same logic with uh, Roman Reigns, where uh, I, I think that Jay Lethal is fantastic, but I think that as far as healthy, productive years in front of him, I mean, Adam Cole's... Adam Cole's younger than I am, and uh, just not only is he, is he fantastic, he's going to be fantastic for many, many years to come. So uh, maybe not going with the most obvious, but I'll go with uh, building for the future. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah. Wheels, you got one? Yeah, uh, I'm going to go a little backwards. I'm going to go Ring of Honor first, and I'm going to go ACH. Hmm. Mm. And basically the same with that thought of what Chris was saying with uh, about his choice in a ring of honor is because of the youth and this drive and everything. And just watching his inner, how excited he is when he gets on that mic with uh, Kevin Kelly and all them, he, it, he can get that crowd Sorry. in the palm of his hands if he wants. Mm-hmm. And, that that would be one of my guys. Plus, I mean, you got to support a brother. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, so <laughs> yeah, let's be fair. If if you it. if you weren't doing that this week, LB would be doing the same right now. Hey, hey I said Cedric Alexander. Oh well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't yeah. state right supporting there. a brother. <laughs> well, no, I, mean, I I felt that would be inappropriate, but well, that's all right. <laughs> I'm on a show. It's all right, Mike. Um, all right, let's go NXT. I'm going to go with uh, honestly Bailey. Okay. I love Bailey. She 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 surprised me from when I started watching her. I'm like, oh, she's adorable, and I could. This is just cute to watch. But you see her work, and it's like, not only looks, but talent. So. And that's what you want in a women's division. You want looks and talent. You just don't want looks. Because believe me, if you have looks, you have Summer Rae. You have. Hey, hey. Oh. Summer, Summer, that, that's, that's. I, that's I low. Know. I'm sorry, Mike. It's not Summer Rae. That's like. Eva Marie. Lana. Free mm. mode. No, it's more like Nikki. I will, and Bailey, you know, along that Bailey's got to be probably the most marketable 
mm-hmm. of the, yeah, I mean, as far true. as just, you know, she's got marketability for days. Fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. the thing about Bailey though, is that she needed a whole bunch of really good heels to get her as hot as she is as a face now. Mm-hmm. Like she had, she had the Charlotte during your back in her. She had the feud with Emma. She had Sasha. And that's why she like that. But sometimes you there. need that help. You do need that help. And mm-hmm. I agree with that, Mike, but, and with that, she didn't drop the ball though. She mm-hmm. didn't drop it. She's like, embrace it. I am a lovable character. Let me just feed on that. So it's like, let's go into now uh, the uh, TNA. Okay, I am going to go for, yes, like Mike said, and sword, DC3. One, I met the guy, pretty cool guy. And I've seen his talent. He can go pro, he can go indie. He, he has the look. He has that full package look on his back. He's not just muscle. He has that wrestling skills. He He's good on the mic. He's everything that I'd want in my company. I'd want him as my champion. Mm-hmm. So, uh, WWE. Hmm. This is pretty simple. I'm going to go with the lunatic fringe, Dean Ambrose. I always want a nut on my team. <laughs> and he's nutty enough to be the guy that, hey, you can love him, you can hate him, but you'll never forget him. There you go. There you go. Right. What about you, Mr. Carlins? All right. Um, I'm trying to go off the off the off the, the uh, worn path here a little bit, but let, let me just start with this simple one. Uh, my guy from WWE would be Seth Rollins. Uh, adorable. Good on the mic, amazing in the ring, can cross over a little bit. Easy choice, right? Um, NXT, I'll take I'll take Apollo Cruz. Even though I haven't seen a ton, what I've seen of him since he got to NXT looks awesome. Athleticism off the charts, doesn't need a lot of bells and whistles. I will save on production costs that I would have had to spend on Finn Balor. <laughs> <laughs> Fair call, my pocket. Uh, TNA, I, I'm a little bit torn. I'm trying not to pick EC3. I, I'm deliberately avoiding EC3 with my TNA pick. Um, yeah, I should have made a caveat that none of us could pick EC3. No, no it, it's okay because, I mean, there are reasons not to pick EC3. I mean, I, there's so much of his character is tied to TNA. I mean, if you try to take him out of TNA, it gets a little bit tricky. Mm-hmm. So there are arguments to be made for why you would take somebody over EC3. I, I got one. I got a couple names I could take over him. I would take Lashley. Just to be that big monster, hmm. credibility, a little bit of crossover appeal, I think he could work. And, you have um, Lashley and Apollo Cruz in the same Fed. Yeah, I'm gonna team them up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ben. <Vince>. Um, <laughs> why not? Um, and from uh, Ring of Honor, I I love Adam Cole, but I'll just be different. I will take Jay Briscoe. Um, who I think is awesome and who just exudes danger and toughness, which is always important when you're trying to convince people that what you're doing is totally on the level. Um, Jay Briscoe exudes real danger whenever he's around. So, oh, and by the way, go. just let me cut in real quick. Uh, you know, having having met Jay Briscoe, that is Jay Briscoe. There is no, <laughs> there's no gimmick. There is no hype. There is no hyperbole. The man you see. You know, there is the same person you see backstage. It's a camp. When we, uh, uh, I can't remember which camp it was, but it was a Ring of Honor camp. He walked in. He was one of the coaches, and he had a stalk of raw broccoli in his hand, <laughs> and he's taking chunks out of it as he's giving us instructions and telling us what to do and how to, uh, you know, where to be aggressive and where and just raw broccoli uh, the entire time he's talking to. <laughs> And there was a part of me that's like, is he fucking with me? Is is this? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and and after real, no, that that's him. It is one hundred percent Jay Briscoe's Jay Briscoe. Wow. All right. And was that everything, Matt? <laughs> that's it. All right. Uh, so we have a lot of responses in the chat room. Real quick, Buddy Landell 
Uh, says uh, WWE John Cena, TNA, EC3, ROH, Jay Briscoe. There you go. Uh, Garza from the Wrestling Revolution.com, WWE Cup and Owens, NXT Sami Zayn, T- well, that's actually evolved now, right? Uh, it's TNA, <laughs> TJ Perkins, ROH, Adam Cole. I would call it 2011 PWG. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? There you go. Eamon, Big E, uh, Biggie Langston, I see he puts the name back in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bailey, EC3, and Ray Rowe. Mm-hmm. That's, that's Ray Rowe. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. Uh, Riz, uh, Kofi Kingston, uh, ACH, EC3, and Asuka. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. And I think that's. Oh, here we go. Uh, Garza says realistically he would take Sasha Baylor Styles and Eddie Edwards. Styles? Uh, AJ Styles? Oh, Didn't from Ring of Honor. Can... That'd be the. I mean, I I, I kind of consider it. I don't really. Cons- I can. AJ is kind of a free agent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's yeah. wherever he wants. Can we to throw go. a New Japan on here as well? Oh my God, you know? that oh, would be. I should have oh, thrown. I should have thrown, thrown in Lucha. <laughs> uh, four is um, enough. Four is enough. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you think about that. Uh, hashtag WMS Big Question. If you uh, hashtag WMS Big Question on Twitter at Mayhem Show, you have a chance to win well, Bloody Harvest 2015 and see that incredible uh, Jason Gorey, uh, Sanjay Dutt, and Amazing Red three way match for the Cruiserweight Championship, not the Junior Heavyweight Championship uh, wheels. Uh, right. but, uh, but no, which is also, if you want to check that out, check out the match, check out the entire show, you can go get it right now at Indie Wrestling. Dot us so you know i i was thinking about some things um you know asuka was debuted officially as uh, in a match i don't know aim is gonna wish he was in here right now i know a lot of you guys catching up with new japan pro wrestling uh especially you carlins uh with your recent g1 uh craziness that happened and and we have a lot of influence going on right now We've had uh, Hideo Tommy, of course, who unfortunately is injured right now. Finn Balor. I, I count Finn Balor as a Japanese influence. That's where he's became Finn Balor. You know what I mean? I, but really, he was. Mm-hmm. Prince Devitt. Prince Devitt, uh, yeah. You know, that's that's where he kind of rose to prominence uh, mm-hmm. over there. And uh, Asuka, of course, and we talked about last week, uh, Eamon schooling me on the, on the you know, you know the wording. You know, Asuka is, is the way that they pronounce it over there, uh, despite the spelling. Um, it's a very Japanese influence is going on right now. And I just want to kind of see what you guys think. Um, um, one, we haven't seen that rise just yet to the main roster. It's been mostly an NXT thing. I kind of wonder what that's going to happen there. I kind of, I, I don't think Japanese wrestling has had a very good Jushin Liger was actually just, just part of it recently NXT, too. Yeah. At the NXT. Um, but we haven't seen a lot of great influence in Japanese wrestling. I, the best I can think of is Bull Nakata. Uh, the Kai and Tai? Uh, <laughs> what do you think of the state of uh, 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 of that influence? And do you think it's going to carry to the main roster very easily? Hmm. Matt, I, I think I want your opinions first. Because you, of course, like I said, yeah. I think you've been, you've been the most invested in New Japan of, of, of this panel here. It's interesting because you watch... Um you watch enough New Japan matches and you start to pick up on kind of like what some of the stylistic differences are on the way they build a match. And then over, you know, the last year or so, you start to see some of these, um, some of these, I don't want to say spots, but yeah, some of these, some of these things that you see in the New Japan match start to slip into some of these WWE matches, especially some of the matches in NXT. Like whenever you see a, a wrestler get suplexed and pop right back up and clothesline the guy. And then they both fall over. That's new Japan. That's that <laughs> like half a second, no sell. And Oh, now I'm hurt. You know, that, that's the new Japan thing. And, and just other, you know, little things too. I, it's, it's interesting to see it kind of, kind of creeping in. I've even kind of, and it's hard for me to remember specifically what it is, but I do remember noticing things in like some of the NXT women's matches, seeing things that, that harken back to New Japan and being like, oh my gosh, that looks like something lifted straight from a New Japan match mm-hmm. and they're doing it in NXT. So obviously if they're doing it in NXT, that's something that's going to creep its way back up to the main roster. And I think like when you look at New Japan, it's a, and, and I'm not someone who's watched New Japan for a ton of years, but looking back on some of the like really old stuff and you think about the reputation New Japan had of just like two guys just like throwing forearms at each other like as hard as they possibly could. But that's not really what – you get that, but it's not really what New Japan 
was to me whenever I first started to watch it a few years ago, it was a far more accessible product and there was a lot more American influence on it a little bit, not just, not just from the, from the wrestlers themselves, but kind of from the ways that they would build the matches. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's kind of a blending in a way. Um, so that's basically where I'm at on that sort. Okay. Okay. Well, what about you guys kind of, uh, you know, your thoughts on it? Uh, Chris, you, you've been, you've been seeing this a bit. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, 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 you work with a company that has a lot of Japan influences right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Ring of Honor has, has worked very closely with New Japan over the past, uh, past two years, really, and they, they made an announcement at the end of the G1 that they that, that relationship would continue going forward. And um, uh, their most recent show, uh, you know, King of Pro Wrestling had, I think the most recent one was King of Pro Wrestling, if I may be wrong, but, uh, you know, Red Dragon, AJ Styles, Rapungi Vice, um, there was a lot of, you know, the, the, you know, Michael Elgin being in the G1 and, you know, having what some would say a career-redefining uh, tournament when he was over in the G1. So I think the influence is starting to, to go both ways. Um, and, you know, Matt was saying a little bit about the, uh, the fighting spirit spots where someone gets crushed and just has so much heart and so much fire that they fight through the pain and hit one more big, uh, big strike before going down. Um, I think that not only we're, we're, that's, that sort of thing has been around. I mean, you've seen, just morons on the indies trying to pull that off for a long time. But now, especially at, at, at NXT and it's, um, they're starting to do it right because you, 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 you care and you're emotionally invested, uh, in, in everyone who's doing it. I think it's, I think it's great. I think that, um, you know, I, I personally think Finn Balor is going to be a WWE world champion someday. I could see him absolutely being um, the the face of the company, the center point of the company, um, and I also could see you know people uh, from New Japan come over and make huge. But I could see Okada being absolutely huge in uh, in WWE. I could see um, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, who actually does speak a little bit of English, and uh, you know so he might be a little bit easier of a trans transition into the WWE. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, I, I'm excited. It, it, it's exciting. It's different. It's, uh, you know, new, new Japan and not just new Japan, you know, pro wrestling. Noah has some absolutely fantastic stuff that's going on. Uh, there's a ton of independents in, uh, in Japan that, uh, are, are, are doing some, some really cool stuff. So, um, yeah, just looking forward to the future. I I, I hope that uh, also uh, more Americans also get the opportunity to go over to New Japan and and maybe can find career resurgences there. Mm-hmm. Where um, I, Trent Beretta, I mean Trent Beretta was God. What was he doing in the WWE? Uh, he was in a tag team. I mean, wasn't yeah, I mean, something like, like that. He was able to do some NXT I don't, I don't stuff be, for a bit. I don't want to be rude, but you know, it was like from from that to now being you know in a featured tag team. Um, uh, I think uh, MVP saw career resurgence there. Shelton Benjamin, uh, AJ Styles, absolutely. I mean, he went over and just completely took it up a notch. Mm-hmm. From, Giant from, Bernard. Giant Bernard. Um, Carl Anderson, obviously. I mean, Carl Anderson, I kind of consider a, a Japanese talent at this point because he's he's been over there for so long. But uh, you know, hopefully the the influence works both ways, and <laughs> uh, you know, we, we see some some of the great talent come over to the WWE or come over to the United States, and uh, maybe it, it, it's a place for uh, some rebirth for some guys over here. Buddy is saying in the chat room. Imagine if WWE took their best workers and did a G1 climax and let them go all out. That would be awesome. That would be the new King of the Ring, wouldn't it? The this is the only thing about they'd also have to give them a month off afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> true. the G1 is is notorious for the just it being the the most hard hitting, physically grueling. Because I mean, what is it? It's like twenty four shows in in thirty days. What's the 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 turnaround is absolutely psychotic and uh 
Matt, you you said you watched the the G one this year. What was like? Is it more than sixty three matches? <laughs> but no, I'm so, like I, it felt like it took a month and a half out of my life. I, and I, you watched it. it, it you were just it watching was, it. I, it was a grind for me. I, I'm and I was like, I felt like I was waking up every single morning, <laughs> and I had to like fire up the Japanese wrestling while I was getting the kids ready. You know, it's like, <laughs> and like, yeah, I felt like I, I I'm like, I, and like, I, I, we took a trip up to Buffalo one weekend and I'm sitting there on a Saturday morning in Buffalo. I'm like, Jesus, how long have I been watching this tournament? This thing's still going. I'm, like, I'm, back in I'm still watching it. This thing won't end. Um, it's it was the wrestling great. Never ends. <laughs> and, and it's also, I wasn't complaining, but it was great. Think about this. The other thing is that you take 20 of the best wrestlers in the world and you tell them all, follow that. Every single match is follow that. Right. And then you do that for a month. Right. <laughs> Good Lord. The escalation of arms in that, yes. in that sequence. Holy and, 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 you know, if you've got the, the best in the world, and it's always, I mean, very competitive people who are very just – Night after night after night after night, one upping themselves over and over and over again. That's got to be absolutely insane. Mm. Ooh, hats off, hats off to everybody who. Uh, mm-hmm. So when are you going to Japan? <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish. Right. <laughs> Book them. Book them, Japanese people. Shinya, I'm coming. O- Shinya, I'm coming over in Japan. There you go. So there you go. All right. On that note, I think we've had some great, great conversations tonight. Uh, by the way, uh, maybe a precursor to what I learned, but I learned that this is how a champion celebrates. Uh, there you go. Some Count Chocolate Pizza and Knob oh, Creek. Of course. No, wait. No. Knob's Cre- Knob Creek. Of course. What, what, how, what else would it be? <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust a champion that hails Hydra. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that. I don't. I don't. Tr- I don't trust it. I don't trust it. That's sorry. Chris Taylor's uh, world uh, uh, world heavyweight or uh, world wrestling champion RWA belt uh, that he won over the weekend, and uh, you know, at least that's, it's not in a refrigerator. That's how he celebrates. And I don't know if you guys know, um, but uh, our our buddy uh, Chachi. Oh, wait, we didn't. We just never brought it up on any of the shows. I don't think he uh, he's getting hitched. He's uh, he, he got engaged a few weeks ago, and uh, you know, he got the ring, did the whole thing. And he didn't propose during a damn John Cena match. No, he did not. He did not <laughs> propose during a John Cena match. But in response, he, you know, the guy never gets a ring, like in as a wedding kind of thing, other than you know the band, you know, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's the band. That's about it, right? Uh, but uh, but but uh, the best fiance in the world, uh, minus my former fiance now wife, <clears throat> uh, because uh, he has. <laughs> <Shut up>! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my wife. My wife. She doesn't listen to these shows. Uh, but anyways, he got a he got an intercontinental championship in, in response. <laughs> now, now hold on. I have a question. Is that because the intercontinental champion is notorious for losing non-title matches, and the husband's always wrong in the marriage? <laughs> Oh, wow. That's wow. kind of a stretch, don't you think? I mean, you're really you're grasping at straws on that wow. one. Wow. You know, I I don't think she's that invested in wrestling to make that determination. I Damn, would be Mike. Wow. You're you're mid card for life in this marriage. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> mid card mafia. Mid card mafia. Uh, thankfully, Chachi also doesn't listen to this show uh, very often. Chachi knows I love him. Oh boy! Somebody <laughs> tag him and let him know he needs to listen to the end of this show uh, tonight. But anyways, um, <laughs> I'm sorry that broke me. What'd you learn from wrestling this week, guys? That's mine. Uh, I have learned that. When you see a caveman wrestle, <laughs> and he, he uses his victory, he doesn't raise the he may raise the hand of his fellow opponent, but he loves to share also. I have... He loves to share his hair fleas with mm-hmm. his opponents, and yes, they eat does. them. Yes, he does, and they do eat them. And uh, I, I I just love me a caveman. What is that? It kind of does look like Jay Briscoe. I was it does say, look like Dave Briscoe just, a little isn't bit. Isn't that just Mark Briscoe? Right? 
<laughs> I'll try a little back up. Uh, yeah, this was the 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 extra match. Now, now wheels. You know, I was pissed because there was an extra match when we already had eight matches on the night, and they came right. back from intermission and said we're gonna have a bonus match. And I'm like, and these guys come out, and I'm like, what in the world is happening? And uh, it's a superhero taking on a caveman. The caveman even did the Umaga spot, by the way, by pinning him the wrong way. Or the Cameron spot, depends on what you want to look at that. <laughs> um, and it was Zorg. the most fantastic match I've seen with two skinny guys in pro wrestling. Um, yes. <laughs> but it was straight up caveman. He may be the third minute me- member of the Briscoe Brothers. I don't know. But it was, uh, it, it was, it was just fun. And it was just um, I th- watching watching him look around when the bell rang, mm-hmm. like what was that? <laughs> Did like at one point, like the caveman busted out a hurricanrana and just broke me. I yeah. <laughs> I think the comment was I don't I didn't know they had hurricanranas in prehistory, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, go check that out. Uh, it, it's actually I I just there's. It was an unannounced match, so we just posted it on YouTube and on Facebook. So go go check it out. I, I shared it over in the Wrestling Mayhem Show group, or go to Renegade Wrestling Alliance on there. We have a lot of indie wrestling in the main show this week. Uh, so, but but really, these mm-hmm. are the alternatives, and this is the kind of stuff you see. And uh, man, that hard cam looks pretty good in that, doesn't it? There's no problem. Yes, right it, there. Looks I'm a bit, saying, it looks very clean. You know, it looks crisp, very clean yeah. and crisp. You know, yeah. maybe a little like VOW. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, <clears throat> enough of that. What'd you, what what else did you learn, Matt? What'd you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I, I, Sorg, I was going to reference a, a GIF, a GIF that I dropped into the chat real quick. I'm not sure if you have access to this, but uh, I, I could describe it real quick, or you can uh, describe make your best describe it for audio as I try to cue it up for our video people. Well, I, I, I'll just say in summary, I, I learned this. I learned from wrestling this week that Ricochet and Matt Seidel are very proud of themselves. Um, during the, um, the new Japan, the big new Japan show over the weekend, they decided, um, they were going to rock the house with this. Uh, let me make sure I got a standing shooting star press from Ricochet, uh, combined at the same time with, um, Seidel doing, I think a standing moonsault. They did this in sync, both landed precisely just perfect. The precision on this is, is off the charts. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I saw this uh, gift GIF and I um, sent a tweet out and you know tagged him wow. on. Just that, Holy you know, this, crap! Boy, that was awesome. Jesus. And uh, I, I made some comment along the lines of, uh, I, "I wonder if there's anyone else on the face of the earth other than uh, Saitel and Ricochet who could actually pull that off." Well, they both responded to me, and Ricochet said, uh, basically said yes, but probably not as perfect. And then um, Saitel replied with uh, even better. He's like, "Try us if they do it." Uh, it would be two move thieves slash imitators uh, who will never have re- real careers. So that was Seidel's <laughs> response. So, wow. You know um, Seidel and Ricochet are very proud of themselves. And you know what? They deserve to be proud of themselves because that is freaking balling. I, that's Ricochet's superhuman. Page. That's amazing. Both of those guys. Yeah. I, I could watch it. Yeah, so, yeah, I stared at this on a loop for a good five minutes or so. and. <laughs> I can't it's believe so how perfectly butter. they land. I can't believe they land. It's not that butter. Perfectly. Wow, that's amazing. It's unbelievable. Uh, I do, can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> what? Uh, Chris, what'd you learn in Chris Russo? Uh, I learned that if you're going to uh, try and fill up your calendar, that you should try to uh, keep track of what cities you're going to be in uh, within 24 hours of making your bookings. So that you don't have to go from Pittsburgh to Dayton to Pittsburgh to Marietta, from Pittsburgh to New York City to back in seventy-two hours. Oh, jeez, Jesus Christ! So that that that's what I learned when <laughs> when I saw what my my calendar uh, holds for me in the next next two days. You need a calendar slash mapping pin kind of. Situation. You need Jarvis. Correct. That's what you need. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> what is this the 80s oh, don't I wish. well <laughs> man mike what'd you learn from wrestling this week i i learned that after the events of takeover respect dana brooke might be my favorite wrestling character oh no <laughs> no oh, and no. I, mean, I mean this unironically because she was put in an unenviable position to be the first lamb led to slaughter for Asuka. 
Mm-hmm. And not only was the match fun, but the uh, the post match of Dana Brooke literally not remembering the match and going to Emma. Oh, I, I beat her, right? It was really quick. How did it, how'd it go? And then Oscar <laughs> came in, patted her on the head and said, "What what's she doing here? I won, right? It was really quick. It was really great, right? Fantastic. <laughs> and, and the match was really good. She's gotten a lot better. And I always said when Dana Brooks' character, like when her wrestling starts to catch up with her character, it's going to be something really fun. I think we're almost there. Hmm. It's a building. It's a building situation all right uh we had some responses uh on on social media about uh about uh, uh what you learned in wrestling this week uh R- mr larusso uh you said using a training mask for blow-up drills might be useful but you end up looking like bane and, and yeah I, yeah you. that's not that's not a thing do you guys know what the training mask is no it's a um it's kind of like it looks kind of like a gas mask and you wear it and it restricts the flow of oxygen so that as you're doing cardio and blow up drills, it's harder to breathe, and it sort of uh, simulates being uh, training at high altitude. Mm-hmm. It's it's great for cardio. I actually I I really enjoy it. However, if you do it during wrestling blow up drills and you start doing, <laughs> and then people start doing, you know, I wondered what would break first, your spirit <laughs> or your body. <laughs> you belong to the wrestling ring. I really thrived in it. And, I mean, Time I to just, mobile. Can we just do a wrestling training video that's completely done in the vein of Bane? Oh uh, no! Trust me. <laughs> they, there was if, if next time I do it, I'll wear wear the mat and I'll just start writing down every uh, what was it? You know, you merely adopted <laughs> the super kick. I was born. All right. <laughs> 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 Who can do the best JR impression and go, that's got to be Bane? <laughs> <laughs> well, I should just close up shop at that point. Um, uh, from from Facebook, uh, we learned, uh, Mr. Garza learned of WrestlingRevolution.com. I uh, learned that Mexico still brings him joy of surprises and controversy of a promotions war. By the way, he so he posts this thing. It's like, so this thing happened in AAA. And we're like, we don't get it. It was like, this is like if Stone Cold went to WCW in 1998. It's like, what? <laughs> oh, uh, so, so he's, he's translating like what's happening now. It's like, like I, I, I just appreciate it so much. I think like didn't Mystico go Sin- to a new... Sin Cara went from AAA to back to CMLL and like CMLL is where he was, uh, where, where, you know, uh, Mystico originally became Mystico. Right. But when he was done with the WWE, he went to AAA and that's when he, what was it? Mysticies? I can't remember. He changed yeah. his name to something yeah, like that. Mysticism. And he yeah. was wrestling with, uh, Del Rio and, and, and Rey Mysterio and they're having all these dream matches. And apparently he made the announcement that he's now going to go back to the rival company um wow. very very soon so it's a uh, you know for for the people who follow that it w- it's a, it's a major defection there you go I, but I, I like that he's keeping us in tune mm-hmm. uh with what's going on down there uh th- th- that's cool I, I love that this is completely global uh so between that and just uh, and then there's the great Kali is doing <laughs> Riz learned that great Kali Great Kali is doing just fine. Uh, there was apparently a <laughs> cement company commercial on our Facebook uh, group today, yes. uh, which looks yes. tremendous. Uh, by if, the way, Great Kali can market anything. It's <laughs> something that has to just be poured once and doesn't have to move after. <laughs> oh. 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 oh, Jesus, Matt! Oh. <laughs> Mike's on a roll tonight. Wow. <laughs> Wow. wow! I've been live. It's been a while since I've been live. I've yeah, been building up singers. That was yeah, a, that was a two run homer off the upper deck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Garza, thanks you by the way for explaining this uh, to the rest of us laymen. Uh, there needs to be like something accessible for us to watch Mexican wrestling as much as New Japan. Like they need the WWE on demand of Triple I, I, I guess I don't know. I, I so that we won't understand. Actually, more of us will understand it because more of us probably took Spanish in high school. If it was on Telemundo, I'd watch it. 
There you go. There you go. I, I remember there being a little bit on Telemundo. Well, New Japan's going to get English commentary here, so I mean, maybe Triple A. I mean, Triple A tr- experimented with it, so there might be English commentary coming up. You know what? Just send Vampiro and Matt Stryker down there, and we'll everything <laughs> will be okay. Okay. But don't send um, Pentagon Junior. That just ends up poorly for everyone that has arms. Mm. Mm. And Alex Carr, as our friend out in California, learned that WWE is letting TMZ dictate their booking. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what to be I... fair, thank God. <laughs> thank God that's over. Oh, that's a love story for the ages. Um, hey, you. Ruru, we, we salute you. <laughs> well done, my friend. There you go. There you go. I got it, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Like. A lot of fun here tonight. I'll uh, blast talk with you guys, and uh, please stick around if you're on the live stream. We're gonna have Remy Levey uh, if he if he gets by, past this detour that's been waylaying him apparently on the way out here uh, for the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, thank you so much. Check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please uh, subscribe. Tell us, tell your friends. Leave a comment on the iTunes. I'm looking for you guys, um, and uh, nobody took up my offer of. Uh, potentially giving out this very depressing wrestling DVD about world-class championship wrestling uh, by leaving some <laughs> comments on the uh, iTunes. If I get five comments this week, one of you guys will get this. Uh, so anyways, bribes work, right? Uh, Sometimes. And of course, drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0 or the email address. Good times! Good times, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Matt Mike 4883 he is... Uh, Man behind the midweek wars and 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 everything like that. Go check him out. And the midweek mild conflict at this point. There you go. Uh, <laughs> the, the midweek skirmish, right? <laughs> yeah, the midweek uh, exhibition games. There you go. Hot Wheels RWA, sound guy over at the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Find out what's going over there at uh, rwalive.com. Yes, yes. Keep it. Keep, I keep it alive over there. Mainstream Matt. I'm a friend in the mainstream. Of course, check out everything at uh, his columns on WrestlingMayhemShow.com and DDWrestling.us. It's been fun, Sorg. I think I have something else to write. I got to go. Okay. And Chris LaRusso, (laughs) pro wrestler extraordinaire. Uh, You can catch him all over the place, including Remix Pro Wrestling. Check it out this weekend, Marietta, Ohio, uh, for RemixProWrestling.com. Anything else to throw out there? Uh, ViciousOutcastWrestling.com. Of course. Uh, uh, PWX dot, uh, uh, PWXTV.com. Um, oh, boy. Now I'm sorry. Uh, Black Diamond Wrestling, NWA uh, Midwest. Uh, oh, God. I'm going to start forgetting things. I'm sorry. Uh, just uh, Chris LaRusso on Facebook f- for whatever. Uh, oh, Rockstar, uh, Rockstar Pro Ludus. Um, God, I'm – jeez. Look at my Facebook page. It's all up there. <laughs> just go to the Facebook just, get, just like the stuff. Just like the stuff. He's a busy man. He's a busy Buy guy. Buy the shirt. You know. Buy the shirt. It's his, uh, it's, uh, his Chris LaRusso goes to heck tour uh, <laughs> coming up here. And of course, about my stuff, Sorgatron. Chris LaRusso com. goes insane tour. Chris, Sorgatron.com, Sorgatronmedia.com, and everything else uh, going on. Uh, check out our new venture, SidekickMediaServices.com. If you uh, want, uh, if you need some help with video or your wrestling promotion, it like video as well uh so uh, with all that thank you everybody for joining us it's been a lot of fun mayhem out this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com